I have finally finished a book. Hi, my name is Juan. I am Just One Reader, and these are my thoughts on Tipping the Velvet by Sarah Waters. So, I finally finished reading this book after a month of reading it, uh, or what feels like a year of reading it. it. It really feels like I have spent quite a long time with these characters, with this writing style, inhabiting this world. Most of that is on me because I've been very busy and I did not pay a lot of attention, especially in the beginning to the book or in the uh, middle section of the book, I guess. Um, but it's, uh, it's, it's a book that is filled with many flaws, but just as many wonders and just as many delights. So in a nutshell, essentially, Tipping the Velvet is a kind of romantic, um, Dickensian feeling, rollicking, at, at times, rollicking adventure, following the story of this girl who is, um, she's an oyster girl. She, so she works, she lives and works in this, um, a very simple village in England and her whole family is dedicated to the business of catching oysters and serving oysters. So she has a very simple kind of life. But then um, she, this girl, uh, whose name is Nancy, by the way, she has a passion for theater and for the entertainment uh, industry, showbiz. One singular sensation. Dun, 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 So she goes to the theater pretty much every so often, like, I don't know, every week or so. And uh, she goes to the music halls and she, you know, sees all these entertainers, all these showbiz people. And then she falls in love with um, one, inter one uh, performer who is a girl. Her name is Kitty. Uh, and Kitty uh, cross-dresses as a man, and so it's it's a very risque um, kind of act. And, well, the story picks up from there. They become in love. This is pretty much the premise of the novel, so this is not really a spoiler. It's, it's there in the synopsis. And then we follow uh, Nancy as she uh, gets involved, more and more involved with Kitty, and they embark together on an adventure to London Town. London, there's no place like London. No, that's not the, that's the worst pies in London. Sweeney Todd, no one? I have sailed the world and seen its wonders From the Dardanelles to the mountains of Peru But there's no place like London I feel home again Anyway, so we go to London and the story sort of picks up from there and it has many adventures. The book itself is divided into segments and each segment sort of follows a different uh, like adventure or a different part of Nancy's life. In London, she meets different people. She gets herself in some really awful situations, some wonderful situations as well. And she encounters a lot of characters along the way. So it definitely feels like a Victorian novel or, or an ancient, uh, more classical novel in that regard. Um, Sarah Waters herself in the afterword mentions that uh, this book is unashamedly, unashamedly, is that, the, is that a word? And unabashedly purple at times. And it is not afraid to be corny and it's not afraid to be purple and, and um, on the nose. And I agree with her. I think this novel has uh, a level of conceit and and contrivance that is almost annoying it, it's a novel that you if you don't like the contrivancy of it and the the conceit and the uh 
there's just so many things that are very <laughs> unbelievable and corny and very soap opera-ish, soap opera-ish. Um, you might not like them, but if you can get on board with those um, contrivances, then you will get on board with it and you will like it. Um, I So these are just some of my disjointed thoughts on the book uh, because I just finished it. So I'm still sort of thinking about this as I go. Um, I think the character, the main character of Nancy is very interesting. She doesn't really have... A, 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 a spectacular, dramatic character arc. Uh, she, I guess she, she's a character who feels unfinished for me because she starts out as this very innocent, deeply repressed simpleton. And she is supposed to go on this journey of self-discovery and she does. Um, but then she also gets herself into some really unsavory situations. Um, I would actually recommend that if you are reading this book or if you have read this book or maybe just in general, I would recommend that you watch a French movie that came out last year. The title is uh, Savage, uh, Sauvage in French, and it's about this um, male gay prostitute who works the streets in France. And he has a borderline personality disorder, very, 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 uh, very sick, mentally uh, sick patient. And it made me think reading Tipping the Velvet made me think a lot of that movie because even though these are different characters, different contexts, different personality types and everything, there's a lot of comparisons to be made. So I think that's an interesting um, uh, thing to watch if you want to compare and contrast both of these characters. I think it's a good exercise. Um, what I loved the most about Tipping the Velvet was the parts of it that felt like a rollicking adventure of uh, watching N this character, Nancy, get into the worst possible scenarios and, and, me and getting involved with the worst kind of people ever imagined. Like there are some char some instances in the book where I was so frustrated with her because she was literally digging her her very own grave. She was just getting deeper and deeper into shit. And it was very frustrating because that's that's a reality. That's something that happens in real actual life. People make the bad decisions um because of their psychopathologies. And there's nothing you can do except uh, r reminding yourself that it's a book and, and, and eating your popcorn and enjoying it. <laughs> so, yeah, I really liked uh, the, I think it's the middle portion of the book where we just follow these tragic, tragic tales of Nancy in London. It's just tragic, but it's so suspenseful and it feels like a fucking horror novel. It's very well written, and I really enjoyed that part of it. The first part of the, of the book was probably my second least favorite because we get the introduction to everything, and we also get London, like the, the London of entertainment and show business, the West End, theater everywhere, and it's it's a very very spectacular portrayal of that town and of that world. Um, my my least favorite part of the book was the ending. I think the ending felt very rushed for me, at least that was my opinion. It felt a little too contrived, as I have said. It felt like the author just wanted to tie everything up with a ribbon and it was it was just a little too easy for me but I, I i don't necessarily have a problem with it so i can let go of those things and i can just you know whatever it's it's okay um 
So in the end, I would say that Tipping the Velvet is an interesting novel. I would absolutely recommend it. I would give it, I guess, a four star rating. It's not my favorite book ever, but it it's not my favorite Sarah Waters book. I think it actually is my least favorite of her, the three novels by her that I've read. Uh, Fingersmith being my number one, the second one being The Little Stranger, and this one takes the third spot. It's very good. Um, it's just a little... Um, you can see that this is her first novel. You can see there are some uh, unpolished business in here, some things that a more experienced writer would have changed or would have eliminated or would have uh, uh, written in more depth. Um, but that's fine. It's a very good debut novel. And I guess my other big criticism is that it is a little too long for what it is. I think it, it doesn't necessarily need the length that it has. It is almost 500 pages long in this edition. And Sometimes it did feel a little draggy in my opinion. Um, so maybe some editing would have benefited this book, but that's just my opinion. So what is your opinion on Tipping the Velvet? What is your opinion on Sarah Waters? What is your opinion on gay fiction or gay fiction, specifically gay historical fiction? It's very interesting and I think um, I am going to really benefit from having read this book. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna grow a lot as a reader because it will give me a lot to think about. So thanks for watching. That is my review or well, not really review. It's just some of my thoughts on tipping the velvet. Thank you.